welcome to Survival 101. Today I'm going to share with you how to can without canning jars. Now before you wonder what in the world is this video about, I shared with you right about here is the video I shared about how canning jars and canning lids are getting hard to find. I shared with you there's a metal shortage and there might be a whole year of not being able to get canning lids and jars. So in a scenario of not being able to go to the store or not leaving your property, what do you do when you have to can food and you don't got any more jars or lids? I'm going to give you a really unique idea. This is not USDA regulated. A lot of videos I'm going to be sharing with you are not USDA regulated. That just means the USDA hasn't tested it enough to say that it's safe. But this is what you do. In the depression area, they didn't go by the USDA. They went by their knowledge and they went by common sense. And you know what? We are lacking common sense nowadays. We have these kind of jars. These kind of jars, spaghetti comes in. As you see, it says mason on them. These are mason jars. These are canning jars. So these jars would be the same as a canning jar. A regular lid fits on these jars. But then we have prego, ragu, all different kinds of brand name jars. Well, we're going to look at these jars and see, can we pressure can using these? I have never had an issue with my jars becoming unsealed. In fact, I think the seal on these lids are even stronger than on the ball lids. That's my personal opinion. So we have the jar and we're going to look at it. It's very thick. In general, pickle jars aren't as thick, so I would not recommend using pickle jars. But spaghetti jars we're going to use for spaghetti sauce. Now I would not can with meat or can with low pressured food in here, just as a safe precaution. But I can use it for tomatoes and so what was in this jar in the store, we're going to put in the jar today. So we have the prego and they have the ragu. Both jars are probably pretty much the same and they might even be the same company that makes them. This video isn't necessarily what I'm cooking and what I'm canning, but it's more of just using jars and using what you have on the homestead. I am going to share with you my spaghetti sauce because I use the skins of the tomatoes in everything and I puree it really fine because I believe in using as much of a fruit and vegetable as you possibly can. It's very easy, very simple. I also have my own homemade pizza sauce mix that I made about a month ago. I'll try to find that video for you as well. So let's go to the stove and we're going to make our sauce. We're going to put it in our jars. These jars, I'm not going to boil the lids, the same as bowl. I'm just going to put the clean lids on the clean jar and we're going to pressure can it for 30 minutes. Would a jar like this last if you pressure can it for 90 minutes with meat in it? I don't know. That's pushing it. So I'm going to only use high acid foods for in these jars. These are the tomatoes I picked in from the garden and I had to cut them up because there were some spots in them I needed to cut, but we don't waste anything. And so if there's a little spot in them, you just go ahead and you cut that out. And having the skins in, some people might find that really unusual. I also have a video called Tessie's Petty Pinching Pizza Sauce, and I'll share with that with you too. And that shares exactly what I'm doing here. I also have some of my peppers and some of my onions, and because we're pressure canning, we can add all of this without any more acid. So it's going to be a very chunky spaghetti sauce or pizza sauce. I use both for either. We're going to go ahead and let them cook down just a little bit. Then we're going to take our immerser blender and blend them up really well. And then I'll show you what we add next. I actually decided to make this more into a stewed tomato. So we're just going to have it like this. And I use this in chili and I use it in things like that. So. The peppers are basically raw, but they will be cooking because we're pressure canning them. I'm just going to leave it just like this. I add a little bit of brown sugar to it and just a couple of seasonings and spices. So it's basically stewed tomatoes. It tastes really good. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it in the jars and then I'll show you what we do next. I'm not using conventional canning jars. The funnel isn't going to work very well. So this is the challenge that we have. So we're just going to take the funnel and use our hands to hold the funnel in place. Now we're going to fill our jars the same as you would a canning jar. Okay. 
Now see, I'm not making it totally full. You want to make sure you leave some room. Now these jars are probably not as big as a canning jar, so it's probably not a full quart. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of these jars. Look how beautiful they are. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna make sure there's no residue of food on the rim of our jars. Make sure there's no cracks in our jars. One thing nice about these jars is it says Prego on it so you know you have the right lid. It's called lug lids. So you twist them. They won't, you won't be able to screw them on like you would a regular canning jar lid. So this one is the Ragu, I think. So this one is the Aldi one. So one thing I want to point out is I had a little problem because I didn't have the lids on the right jars. And so I couldn't find the right lids. It's really important when you have store-bought jars to make sure you put the lids on the jars and keep them on there. So these two jars, I couldn't find which was the right lid, so I had to go out in my canning garage and see if I could find more lids. Ultimately, I just decided to use some more jars, different ones. carrots that I also needed to can and should try to always have your canner full you don't have to have the canner full you could only can with one or two jars if you wanted to but really if you're going to use all of the energy to can you might as well fill up your canner this is my t-fowl canner and I'll show you when we get to the temperature of 10 pounds per pressure it takes me 30 minutes to vent 30 minutes for pressure and then it I count another 30 minutes for me with the gas stove, the propane, it takes me much longer to can than people who have electric stove. All right, so the canner is finished. And you always want to have the lid away from you. This is where you want to be really careful because you don't want to have a big drop in temperature. And that could make these kind of jars maybe break. So you got to go really easy with it. From looks of it, it appears as if all jars are intact. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our jars out. There's the Prego. Here is the Aldi name brand jar. And these are the Classico, which I'm canned the carrots in the Classico because they are regular mason jars. Here we have another Classico, a really big one. Look at that, that's two quarts. And there we have this one. All of them were pressure canned for 30 minutes at 12 pounds of pressure and we have no breakage. So here's a demonstration of what I do in a survival situation. You know, if you have all the lids and all the jars you need, that's great to use them. But what happens if you don't have all of that? And that's part of this survival series. What do you do? You use what you got. Take care everybody and I'll show you after all of these are sealed. I just want to report that every single jar is sealed. 
They are all sealed, all of them. So all the jars, every single one of them sealed. In fact, when they seal, they're really loud, so you can really hear that they sealed. And of course, my carrots have sealed as well. So there you go, everyone. That's the end finished product.